All right, in this video, we study the laws of matrix algebra. So we have learned that we can add and multiply matrices. So these operations satisfy certain set of uh, rules or laws, just like the laws of usual numbers. So let's start. Okay, so let's say we have matrices A, B, and C. We do not explicitly specify the sizes of these matrices, but uh, we assume that whenever we do addition or multiplication between these matrices, we assume that uh, uh, those sizes are compatible with, uh, with the given operation. For example, uh, we have the following distributive law. A times B plus C is equal to AB plus a, C. So multiplication distributes over addition, just like usual numbers. And since um, matrix multiplication is not always commutative, uh, we also need uh, this type of distributive law. So distribute from the right. Okay, so in this case, we have A, C plus B, C. And also, matrix uh, multiplication is associative. That means first we multiply AB and then multiply by C from the right. Then that is the same as we first multiply B and C and then multiply A from the left. So these are distributive laws. And this one is associativity. Associative. And proving this is quite straightforward. You just apply the definitions of addition and multiplication of matrices, but it can be cumbersome. So you should uh, cleverly manipulate all the indices uh, involved. For example, let's see this one, okay? So A, B times C. So its IJ element is, so first we, mod, so A, B, this here, here, A, B is a matrix, okay? It's a product of A and B. So it's a matrix. So the product between this matrix and C is something like this, K. So this index runs from one to some, some specified number, but we don't specify it here explicitly. But anyway, so A, B is a matrix, and it's I, so this I, I, K element is multiplied by uh, matrix C's K, J element, so this J and this J, okay? This I, this I, and this J, and this J, and in between we have the same K here. So this is according to the definition of matrix multiplication. And then we apply the definition of matrix multiplication to this part. Okay, then that is equal to, so we leave this summation here with index k. And uh, we have, let's see, uh, so this is ik element of matrix ab, right? So that should be, uh, let's uh, loop over uh, sum over L, index L, and A, so this is I, and L, and B, and this is K, and this is L, so L and K here. Then we have C, K, J. Okay? Remember, this is just a summation, okay? So it looks like this. If we expand this, we have, so K, L varies from 1 to something. So it will be A, I1, and B, 1, 1K, one plus A, I2, and B, 2K, and so on. Okay, so, and times everything times C, K, J. So, you know, these are just real numbers, okay? So we can use the distributive law of 
ordinary uh, numbers or real numbers. So uh, not here, but uh, so this is one term, and uh, we multiply by this, and this is another term. We multiply by this. Okay. So we have. Uh, a i1 b i k times c k j and so on so j just use some some symbol instead of writing like this so that is k and sum over l and a i so this index corresponds to l and uh, b l k and c kj okay now uh, let's look at the right hand side so we first multiply b and c and then multiply a and a from the left so if you look at this we can uh, because of the associativity of uh, multiplication between real numbers we can write this as uh, this Okay, and here the index k appears only here and here. Okay, so it doesn't appear here. So we can bring this sum symbol to this place. Okay, so so we can swap this sum, and uh, a i l can be factorized, and uh, sum symbol comes here. Uh, over k and uh, b l k and c k j okay but this one is what l and j and k is here so this means it's uh it's the element uh l j element of matrix bc okay now we have l here and l here so this is the same as and we have i and j here so that is a b c i j so after all this thing first we multiply a and b and then c from the right is equal to we first multiply b and c and multiply by a from the left Therefore, uh, A, B, C is equal to A, B, C. And we are done. All right. From now on, in this video, we focus on square matrices. That is, uh, n by n matrix. So there are as many rows as there are columns. Okay. Such, uh, the set of such matrices, let's write it as m n of k so this is the set of all n by n matrices so square matrices over k so k is a field so that is usually uh, the set of real numbers or sometimes it can be set of complex numbers or sometimes it can be something else but usually we consider only uh, uh, matrices over real numbers okay now consider a special matrix O or called uh, zero matrix so that is made of only zero elements so zero zero every element is zero oh, by the way uh, when there is no fear of confusion we just omit this part and write uh, this set as MN okay so it's just M by n matrix square matrix and this zero matrix is also an element of uh, this set mn okay so as you can see uh, it's easy to see that for any matrix a in mn we have a plus o is equal to o plus a is equal to a so this means this matrix, this zero matrix, acts as the additive identity. Uh, 
uh, in the algebra of matrices. And of course, for any uh, square matrices of the same size, we can define multiplication. Okay, so let's summarize uh, the properties of matrix algebra defined by defined on this set uh, with addition and matrix multiplication. Okay, in the following, we assume that uh, matrices A, B, and C are in MN. So they are all n by n square matrices, uh, in particular over uh, the field of real numbers. Okay, so let's list uh, all of the properties. So A plus B is in MN. So this is a closure condition. Closure. So this set of square matrices is closed under matrix addition. Okay, And matrix addition is, of course, associative. And you should prove all of this. And it's not uh, so difficult. Associative. Oops. Associative. So addition is associative. And three. So we have additive identity. So this is, uh, in fact, uh, the zero matrix such that uh, for all matrix in MN, we have A plus O is equal to O plus A is equal to A. And uh, four, uh, for any matrix in MN, there exists some matrix Okay, there exists some matrix. Let's call it A prime, such that A plus A prime is equal to the zero matrix. Okay, and such A prime is called the additive inverse. And we usually write it as negative A. Okay, negative A. So we do not specifically define subtraction between matrices, but subtraction is just a uh, shorthand notation for addition between one element and another element, which is the additive inverse of some other some some other matrix. Okay. So that's uh, additive inverse and five. Uh, matrix addition is commutative. So A plus B is equal to B plus A. So commutative. Addition is commutative. So, so far, these five rules or laws, uh, properties are all uh, concerned with addition. Next, let's consider multiplication. So A, B, is also an element of MN. So that means, so this is a closure condition. Closure condition. So this set of matrices, square matrices is closed under matrix multiplication. And seven, uh, as we have shown bef above, uh, matrix multiplication is associative. So A, B, then C is equal to A, uh, B, C, then A from the, fr from the left. Okay. In the case of matrix multiplication, the order, uh, I mean, you know, uh, if we multiply from the left or right, it doesn't matter. Okay. We, in other words, uh, multiplication is not always commutative. So this order, you know, C from the left, A from uh, C from the right, and A from the left. So it is important. And so these two rules are for matrix multiplication. And eight, uh, that combines uh, addition and multiplication. And we have seen this before. So it's a distributive law. A 
times b plus c is equal to a b plus a c. Okay, we cannot switch a b to b a because the the order matters. Okay, and nine. Uh, another distributive law, uh, which we have already seen. So a plus b times c from the right is equal to a c plus b c. Okay, so these are distributive laws. So we have these nine laws, uh, nine properties uh, that are satisfied by uh, matrix algebra. So this set of rules looks pretty similar to the the axioms of the field. Okay, remember field? Uh, maybe you should, uh, you might want to review the definition of fields, but this is different from fields. Okay, for example, we do not have the commutative law for multiplication. And we do not uh, have the existence of uh, uh, multiplicative inverses, right? So there are no division defined here. We only have multiplication, but no divisions, okay? No multiplicative inverse. We do have inverse for addition, but uh, no inverses are defined for multiplication. So this is a huge difference. And indeed, there is a name for such a system that is called a ring. Okay. So ring is a set. A ring is a set uh, endowed, so equipped with, uh, endowed with or equipped with, equipped with addition. and multiplication. And that satisfy all these properties from one to nine. So such a set, any set with addition and multiplication satisfying these rules are called a ring, okay? So in this sense, M N with matrix addition and multiplication is a ring. Okay, it's not a field, but it's a ring. And uh, the set of square matrices is not the only example of a ring. Uh, we have a bunch of examples. Let's say, uh, let's consider the set of integers with addition and multiplication of uh, uh, defined as usual. So. This is a ring. So here's one example. And another example, the set of polynomials with rational coefficients is a ring. So what is this? It's a set of polynomials. So it looks like something like this. A and uh, let's consider a more concrete example. So x, 1 times x plus 2 is an element of this, right? Because the coefficient, we have a variable x, indeterminate variable x, and 1 is a rational number, and 2 is a rational number. So it, it is an element of this set. Okay, so 3 over 2x squared plus uh, 99 over, uh, let's say, 5x plus uh, 2 over 3 is, again, an element of this, okay? So this is a rational number, this is a rational number, so is this. And we have x, x squared, x, and so on. More generally, we have uh, something like this, qn x to the power of n, qn minus 1, x to the power of n minus 1, and so on and uh, q1 x plus q0. And all of these uh, coefficients are Russian numbers. If that's the case, then it is an element of this set. Then how do we define addition and multiplication in this, on this set? 
So it's just an addition and multiplication of uh, such polynomials. And I think it's easy to guess, and you should try. So for example, if we add this polynomial and this polynomial, what do we get? So we just add uh, the coefficients of, of the corresponding uh, terms, so x first order, x, then we add 1 plus 99 over 5, then we get some uh, number, and we add this 2, this uh, constant 2, and 2 over 3, and we get some number, and this, uh, there is no corresponding element uh, term in the first polynomial, so it, it, it's, it just stays like that. So that will be the result. So we can define uh, addition and multiplication more generally. Then this set is a ring. So uh, now we know this mn is a ring, and integers are ring, and the polynomials of rational coefficients are a ring. So if we can prove some property based only on the properties of ring, of rings. So in that case, we don't have to prove the same properties for each of them. Okay? So that's, the, uh, that's a very convenient way to find some universal properties among uh, many mathematical objects. So it's very similar to what we did for a field. So if we find uh, some common properties across all fields, then we don't have to prove the same thing for each each of the fields. Okay, so that's all for this video. Uh, see you later.